Hello everyone, this is Zelks here, and today we'll be playing Zephy Runecraft with some extra interns from Mysteria Academy. The idea behind this deck is really simple. You play test subjects, you get them to you get, play five of them, they become five fives, you end the game the game with Zephy's uh fanfare effect which gives every test subject storm if five volunteer test subjects have come into play. The reason why I'm pairing it up with the Mysterium package is actually because Mysteria has very strong ways of controlling the board in the middle game. So even if you don't draw your test subjects, their followers are very well stated and they have very strong capabilities in clearing the board. One example will be Mysterium Missile, one mana due 3 to an enemy follower, very helpful in trading into any cards that you don't want to trade into, Mysterium Tomb is a banish, you can use it to banish last words, uh, we are makes all Mysterium followers e4 for free, Bertrand is he summons clay golems which you can use for ward, Academy Worm is a very strong card, Radium for heal, or Black Worm for extra damage reach, very useful, and not only that, we can also play other tech cards, or Joker cards that I like to call them. Angel of Darkness for buff and heal matchups. Oh, for combo deck finish, OTK finishers like, let's see, Golem Lord, Magachio, etc. Uh, Castell, etc. Then we have Demon Manipulator, counter spell based decks. For example, Mysteria, actually Mysteria Rune as well as Castell. And then we have Star Wars Snowman, which you honestly just replaced it with Odin, but I chose Star Wars Snowman because he's cool. And yeah, he's a chill dude. Counters, let's see, Last Word Shadow, because you can transform an enemy into a snowman, or anything that has followers that you that transform deals with really, really well. Alright, I forgot to mention Veil, which is also a 2 mana, 2 2 ward, and also summons a 1 1 draw a card, which you know. It's still pretty good, and then there's Mikael, which is extra healing. Works quite well. Is it gonna, It's really hard to play though, so don't blame me if you lose a couple of games. Here's the QR code that is also be in the description down below. If you're new to the channel, remember leave a like, leave a subscribe, and without further ado, let's get right into the gameplay. So yes, most of the games today will be played in replay mode, usually because there's a lot of interesting games that and unique place that you probably have never seen all in one game but yes this and also another reason is that i just forgot to record this on stream so ahaha <laughs> so yes let's get right into the deck right now uh i'll talk about the matchup first this is if you know haven players if they're not playing heal they're playing big and this time we are in a big haven matchup and it is, which is exactly why I went for the Mysteria opener instead of uh, trying to look for a test subject opener. Usually, because I know that Big Haven loves pushing their HP limit over 20. And that's almost exactly why I'm stocking up on Green Black Worms at the very beginning instead of if, let's say, I'm in an aggressive matchup, I'll go for Radiant White Worm instead to, for the healing. This hand is actually really really good, especially in I get quite a lot of early game tempo, but here I made a really interesting play, I decided to play Veil into Mikael. The reason why I did this is since they are big haven, they have Lena, and Lena's evolve effect tears the flow with the highest attack, which is why I played Mikael as a bait for Lena, but they didn't end up playing Lena anyways, so th that's that. They still managed to get quite a lot of clear off, cheat out quite a bit of mana. And they did not clear my test subject so I didn't get a draw, but we don't care about that either ways. Here we I played another obsessive scholar and my last worm is getting another black worm in preparation of whenever the causes of condemnation or or their medics or whatever came out that re increases their max hit points. What good thing I did, didn't go aggressive this early game and try to put, uh, rush him down. It's quite impossible to rush down a heal deck. They have quite an insane amount of healing. 
And man, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy I did not go for that route. I could have cleared easily easier if I had evolved this devoted researcher, but I decided to preserve evolve points for as tech cards. For my tech cards, like if I for Angel of Darkness, for example, there's one of my few techs in my deck. It's best not to waste uh, evolve points where I don't need to. Here's the Lena that we were talking about. If it had came down four turns earlier, then my play would have made sense. But because it didn't, it makes me look like an absolute fool. Even though I have the insight to actually do what I think needs to be done. Mikhail invokes from my deck onto the field instead of my hand this time, and I decide to clear using a mystery in a mysterious way. Since well, I want to get Nick Nick down, get more draw, as well as you know just overall. Just having cards in hand. And we did get a Mysterium Book, which is an unconditional banish if I get another. for three actually, if I get another Gia. That's the Great Goddess of Condemnation that I'm talking about. Now they are at 25 hit points, usually OTK decks can reach this high. But since, well, I actually prepared the Green Black one beforehand, I have 6 additional burn in hand that I could abuse alongside Sephi. Quite a good fusion here, pushes my hand size quite high. And I play Yo. I could choose to evolve her here just to get a damage shield, but honestly, it doesn't really matter since, well, they are invoking, they are getting Sukuyomi next turn, which will pop it immediately. In which case, I decided not to evolve it either. Uh, let's see, the game should be ending quite soon. I'm not quite sure how, I'm still not sure how this game will turn out. Look, there's another heal, there's another arm, arm mirage, which sh shoots down my test subjects like butter, cuts through them as though they are nothing. And they left it up, pretty confident that you'll survive. And they'll, I, I'll give it to them. I would have their confidence if I'm at 25 hit points as well and my opponent's at 13. But they probably didn't realize I'm already preparing for to OTK them soon, pretty soon actually. Here I have, uh, I played, well, book to banish the 5-7 is a huge value, basically spending 1 mana and no evolve points to clear a follower for free. And then we have Devoted Researcher, which I traded one of my test subjects in, you know, get more cards. Funnily enough, I felt like I could have uh, gotten another test subject down, but who knows really at this point. Now they have played another Cottontail Cerugian, really strong card actually, uh, contributing 3 to Lena's Needle effect. And actually, I feel like they kind of misplayed here for some reason. I'm not sure why, but just a hunch that they misplayed didn't. And here they actually left me little. I'm gonna pause it for like 5 seconds, see if you can find it. Okay, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Leaving, leaving a Mysterium Tomb was huge for me. Because this means that I can actually go face to face. I don't actually have to look for what another Sephi. The Green Black Ones comes in, does their job of burning 6 to face. And now with Sephi and the test subject that I drew, which I still have more, I have way more uh, play points than I actually need. And the Mysterium the Tomb that was left, I do manage to have exactly 26 damage for lethal. And this is why guys, you do not get cocky. And Mysteria is pretty good with Sephi after all. Now this second game is also a very interesting one. It's one of those typical scenarios where you face into an opponent that decided that hey, just because everything is going according to Kekaku, I don't have to care about what my opponent is doing at all. Yes, it's one of those games. So seeing that opponent is a runecraft player, I was looking for either I was hoping for mostly the mainly the Mysterium package. Since Mysterium is quite strong against some of the decks that are running around as runecraft right now, also looking for demon manipulator. But this time we know that he's playing Earth, right? So personally I'm looking for combo stoppers like Mind Control Mage. Sorry, not like Earth, which I did secure as a way to block out if he's Earth right, which 
either Levi or Golem Lord. I'm assuming it's Golem Lord right at the very beginning since Golem Lord reanimate all is really really popular. So here I'm just discounting Radiance. Also, the Mysterian uh, spells that I got from Bell Witch will also spell boost Earth into a way that she can actually summon, have a chance of summoning a test subject, which could be really helpful. I'm not even gonna lie. Then, because uh, we have a spare one mana from after playing Obsessive, I can use Mysterian Missile to clear the Golem for free and go face for 4 damage. Very nice. Got small pings of all's good, all's lovely. However, our opponent has an equally strong play in the form of Greenier. She puts a very thick uh, ritual into her, in my opponent's hand, which could pop my shield. I wouldn't be mad if I eat three damage from one of the, from her, from just from one of his cards, which is why perfectly fine with playing O here. I believe did I play O. Oh, I didn't play O. Oh, I played that subject because that subject will be able to kill this bot without getting any more damage. Right. Did I keep this up? I kept it up because there's no point going in with this. It will die if it runs into my 2 2 anyways. If it doesn't run into my 2 2, it, would, it would doesn't matter what it does with it any, regardless. Although I would say it was a little bit odd why he didn't play Golem Lord that turn. If he had played Golem Lord that turn, he would have gotten quite a bit of bad, fair bit of value. And even then, even if I banish Golem Lord, I still had to deal with like a quite a number of stats on the field. Which you know what? At this point in time, I was actually quite glad he didn't know how to play his deck. This time, Yo did not hit the volunteer test subjects, but it did give me the damage shield that I was play originally playing this card for. And with the uh, I, I think I went value here. I didn't go value here. I decided to trade both my test subject for some odd reason, even though I could have preserved one of them for. By somehow, but I don't know why I decided to trade both. I can understand myself sometimes. That was a really good hit. Hitting O means that I don't lose any of my guys, although hitting a Devoted Researcher might have been a lot better for me. They also got their mana cheat online, which, you know what, at this point I'm a little bit worried. I know they have two Golem Lords in hand now. If they play both, that's a, they have a good chance of doing a lot of damage to me. At least the first one won't do anything because of my damage shield. I'm just gonna check how many Golems they summon. Seven, that's a lot of Golems. Right here, I decided to fuse two cards with Sefi, summon another test subject, get Rush, go in. Then another test subject, get another. Get another 5 5 Rush follower, and then I'll play Obsessive for a short draw, a condemn. And then we'll get two total draws, which is why I decided. When I didn't play a card, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the mill. Oh my god, I'm so brave. Which honestly don't do that. You should have probably you should try fusing if you can. Right here they play Golem Lord, but this time I'm actually I'm still prepared. I have book in my hand. Despite not having any evolve points, I actually do have Gria, which is why I'm running Gria in the deck. And Mysterion is so good. Look at that. That was a such a that was such a strong Golem Lord. It did zero damage to my face, which would have been detrimental if not if for the for if you have seen, if you know what his follow up is, which you will definitely know, you'll see it in just a moment. But because he didn't manage to pop my face shield, and I'll let you know he doesn't know how to read, I'll banish the Golem Lord with the Mysterian Tome, very easy, very simple to deal with. And then I'll, I'm trying to now, I'm trying to build up a new board, you know, of cards. Here, I play Mysterian Circle, get a full board of followers, good followers, fairly stated have 12 damage, 14 damage on board, 16 damage on board. And look at that here. If I did not banish that Golem Lord, this year we have reanimated a Golem Lord and I have taken so much damage. And with the other Golem in his hand, it would have been lethal for him. But unfortunately, I'm not that easy. I'm actually a good player. So with all my rush followers trading in with my guys, I use which, you know what, I probably didn't have to do that for, for some reason, but I used Black Worm to pop the shield and with my two Safis and my test subject in hand, I fuse away my home hand as a flex and SBM and lay dead. 
Isn't that pretty satisfying when your tech cards actually does what they want you to do? It feels good. Now this was a, actually a really interesting game. We are going to kill the buff dragon follower and play a sorry, not follower. I don't know what I'm thinking. But it is one of those few games where the game would stall so long. I, I finally, like for the once in a long time, I managed to play 3 out of my, the 4 joker cards I placed into my deck. Yes, it was amazing and it was glorious. I absolutely loved it. Okay, to, to be fair, my starting hand is actually not ideal. Usually in this matchup, well, I would love to start with the test subject package instead of the Mysterium package. But you know what? It's fine. The cards, the cards aren't bad at all. And you see here with Obsess with Mind Control Mage and Obsessive Scholar, I managed to throw Condemn. I managed to get start my test subject chain going, even though it's only one out of the five that I actually need. Here they missed the 50-50 for which is rare, I know, shocking. I I take the game for that. And because of Bell Witch spell, I can actually get rid of that 2 2 without spending a follower. It's pure value, I'm telling you. The spell was so strong. One mana deal three. And they played a fish for whatever reason. Yes, I know, it's really weird. I don't know why they have a random fish out of nowhere. But now my hand is acting a little bit full. With Ria's efforts, I'll be I'll be able to clear the who is this striker, Dragonborn striker easily, and using the free evolve to get another four four on the board without spending an evolve point. That is so key. So many of the cards in my tech cards require evolve points, which is why we having Ria here allows us to get evolve points on turns where, on to save on special evolve points. It was so good. Ready. Because it's a uh, buff dragon, I decided to go for an aggressive card. Green black work instead of the white white variant. So it's extra burn damage and extra damage to followers on board just in case. And then I cleared out my hand using followers and nick nicks. And I yeah, I traded up my academy in. They got more draw off, which is good for them I guess. And I managed to start invoking my Mikael's. Well, really slow game so far. Honestly, I feel like they are, the way they made their deck was pretty bad. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I find I I feel like it's pretty bad. And honestly here I didn't really have a need to play Mysterian Circle. On some most of the times Bertrand is better safe in a uh, followable form so that I can actually well fuse it into Safi. Here they actually banished one of my cards which my attack subjects which prevented me from overflowing. I'm quite <laughs> kinda grateful for that. Imagine if I have over drawn a Sephi, that would be so sad. And now finally all my cards are all my test subjects are actually they are five fives. Insane value, I know, I know. I could have used Angel of Darkness to clear that, but you know what? Just in case I need it, I decided to like save it, skimp a little. And actually just use the green black words as te tempo card so I don't have to spend a single evolve point at all. This way if, if they do play Asuka and Shuri, it will be significantly worse than if I just use my evolve points. Oh man, but look at this board. They played two Grand Stamp Tamers. Look at the HP of their followers. That is actually kind of scary, I'm not gonna lie. This is a very intimidating board. They traded away every single card. I believe this time I used book. If I'm, I that's what I believe. I could really well go for another one. Yeah, I did use book. Use book to banish the all the all the enemies. Trading off the zero one because it's useless. Banishing the higher hit points one. Probably going to trade into the five six and then use Rias and burst on it. Veil. Bayo, Bertrand, then I played Nick Nick into Green Black Worm. Absolute peak. Actually, no, I traded there. Okay, that, that was strange. I would have thought I would play Green Black Worm, but you know what? I understand why. I understand that play. I still need to watch out for Joe after all. 
here they are drawing more cards. Now all of their cards are very very high defense. And it's gonna get it's only gonna get harder for me to clear them from now on. However, I will say one of my few hopes of winning this game is that they actually run out of resources and they actually do not have another Joe in hand, which Yes, yeah, I'm worried about that. Did I use I I'm I feel like I'm gonna use Angel of Darkness here. Yes, I did indeed. I was wondering if I would have gone for the drain using the but uh, by evolving who is this? Obsessive Scholar instead, which could have killed me five, which could have not gotten me out of Joe range. Wait, it would have gotten me out of Joe range, but it may not have been able to kill the bot. And look, that's one tag done. Angel of Darkness got the tag done beautifully. And now we have another bot to deal with. With very high hit point followers. Honestly, I'm kind of interested in using Star Sword Snowman here to transform away Gambian. But I decided to try my luck and see if I can get it without using Star Wars Snowman at all. He's actually quite good now, he's actually fully out of resources, he's top decking from now on. And if I'm lucky, I might I stand quite a good chance of winning this. Here I use the entire Mysterium package to discount my another book to zero. And using that book's effect, I managed to banish an another card. Unconditional banish. It was that was really really good. I'm not even gonna lie. It was entirely worth it. It's a just another way of attacking. Just a just a pure bot control power of Mysteria. It's so strong. Funnily enough, I actually got bot lock here, which you know I was so worried because if they actually top that at Joe, I would lose. I would lose. But thankfully they didn't. And this is one of those few scenarios where you actually start to see the <laughs> where stop where Star Wars Snowman, which has been an emotional support in my hand for all this time, finally got a chance to see play. As a trans way to transform a 315 into a 1-1, denying the so essential what they need to stay alive. And at this point, there's no way for them to deal with Snowman, there's no way for them to kill me unless they draw Joe. And I win the game, playing 3 of my tech cards that I included into this deck. <laughs> 